Yes lads, what's going on and welcome back to another video uh, on the channel. Uh, today we're doing a video on boot mod 3 uh, at a glance. Uh, just run through some things that I've learned about it over the time of owning it, run through what it actually is. Um, and if I don't cover something that you want to know in this video, comment down below and I'll be sure to make a video uh, on answering questions or if anyone's got a video idea of boot mod 3 drop them down in the comment section and I'll be happy to do a video on that so firstly what is boot mod 3 well in most basic terms boot mod 3 is a mapping software that you can get on your phone uh, for BMWs and you literally map your car from your phone uh, now how do you map your car from your phone so you download Boot Mod 3 on the App Store and then you have to pay for the license. Uh, so I believe a new license is £500. Obviously you have to buy the license dependent on what engine you've got in your car. Um, so as I say, I've got an M55 engine in my M235i. Uh, but I actually got mine second hand. So second hand licenses normally go for about 250 quid. Um, and you can only sell it once so if you buy for 250 quid you can't go ahead and sell it again uh, this is to stop people from making um, money on it because you could literally just transfer the license to another um, vehicle chassis number and then you could just transfer it back and charge someone 100 pound for a map and you're making money on it so that's probably why they put that in place so you can't make money off their software now all you need in terms of how do you connect your phone to your car well it's just an ethernet cable which goes to your iphone uh, and then that will connect to an obd port wire so obviously this goes in your car that'll then go in your phone and boot mod 3 will read your car basically now as i mentioned before when you first download boot mod 3 and put it to your vehicle it will learn your VIN your vehicle identification number so you can't then plug it into another BM and map it so it's just for your car so you can't make money off this sort of stuff but it is a very good thing to have especially if you're modifying um, your BM I know that one heavy reason why I bought mine was because of the cold start with an aftermarket exhaust system especially with a decap it's so loud and boot mod 3 actually allows you to turn the cold start off so it's not really loud when you start your car uh, but there's loads of things that you can do um, and I'll run through uh, most of the main points here today in this video so if we go ahead and connect this up to my phone just the OBD port obviously in your OBD and then this iPhone lead is going to go into my iPhone and it connects to that box. Now one of the first things I struggled with when I got my Boot Mod 3 license was actually getting a lead. Um, I couldn't find them, they're not easy to find on online, uh, but kindly enough the guy who I bought the license off because I got mine second hand, he actually sent me the lead for free. So very appreciative of that but what I'll do is I'll find the Amazon link for these leads so you after watching this video if you are interested in buying boot mod 3 you can literally go ahead to the link below and buy your adapter for you to plug it into your car so what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this up to boot mod 3 now and um, run through a bit of a screen record uh, and show you the basic things that you can do and the things that I find useful on boot mod 3. Right, so we are connected up to boot mod now. I've just logged in. I'm going to go ahead and connect my port into my phone and turn the ignition on. And you'll see in a minute it will read the DME software IDs and connect to the vehicle. Just takes a minute to read all the ECUs in your car. So 
So now we're in, OBD is connected as it says at the top. Uh, so we're going to go ahead to menu and I'll show you the maps first of all. So the OTS maps uh, are the maps that will go onto your engine. Uh, so you've got stage zero which is basically the map that the M2 has on it because the preface of M2 has the M55 engine in it. And you've got all your multi maps there, stage one, stage two, stage two plus, and you've got your fuel specific uh, maps here, all for 91, 93 octane. Um, now, all these octanes are based in America, uh, so obviously over here we have 95 and 99. Uh, but no matter what you're doing to your car, I'd always run. If you're going to map your car, you might as well put momentum in it. I put momentum in my car anyway, even when it was stock. Momentum or 97, 98. Whatever your premium fuel is, where you fill up, I'd use. And then you've got um, E30 octane, you've got race gas. So it's all quite specific uh, with them maps. The map I've always run is the Stage 0 Plus, which is the M2 map. Uh, and it comes free with boot mod as well when you first buy a boot mod uh, to get all the other ones it's about £30 to unlock every map I've had a play about with the multi maps because um, you get anti lag and stuff like that but for some reason my car just doesn't agree with the map like it just runs a bit weird or it'll stutter and get stuck at a certain rev limit yeah, so I've always stuck for the M2 map I've never had a problem with it so if we go across to my maps now, uh, obviously you can always put your car back to stock tune and if you're ever going to sell boot mod, if you buy it new and ever going to sell it, you'll have to put it back to stock before you can transfer the boot mod license because then you'd be getting a map for free and they don't allow that. So here's all my maps that I've customised and this is the one that I'm running at the minute, the Stage Zero M2 Aggressive. Uh, pop and bang. Now I did name it flame because I saw some guy try and make his flame. I don't know how he did it but I don't think it's possible with boot mod 3. Uh, but if we just go to live adjust so you've got four maps within the M2 map and you can actually adjust your exhaust burble. That's one of the many things I love about boot mod uh, is you can adjust your exhaust burble which we'll go into further detail later on in the video uh, but for now I'll just walk you through um, most things to do with it um, when you actually go on maps oh yeah if you own a later iPhone this menu hates it on your later iPhone so you've just got to play with it for it to work but if we go back to this map and go to config at the top right You'll see all the stuff that you can do. So that's my setup for my exhaust burble at the moment. Um, so you can mess about with the duration uh, in both comfort and sport for every mode. Um, what min and max speed it will do it at and the min and max RPM that it will do it at. So then we come to GTS Startup Raw. That is the... Um, that isn't actually cold start, that's a start up bro. So I've got that on at the minute and the rev jump to like 2k and then drop back off when you first start your car. Uh, you've got your max cooling mode, I've turned that on. Uh, just because I drive quite hard, uh, I want the car to keep at its optimum temperature and not overheat. So there's your cold start, uh, OEM or off. Uh, now I'll show you what cold start sounds normally on my car and what it sounds like with this off is so much better especially if you start one of them people that start your car in the mornings to warm your car up before you go to work especially in winter uh, you really don't want to be pissing your neighbours off because it's proper loud and then obviously your cold start RPM you, if you've got cold start on you can adjust that uh, you've got ignition coils if you ever change the coils in your car you obviously press on there got an option of two coils that you can put in your car that boot mod 3 will support and then it will obviously adjust the map uh, to whatever you put in your car you've got your electronic wastegate disable 
Now I actually tried doing this um, and my car shit itself. I had gearbox faults for some reason. Don't know how I got gearbox faults for an electronic wastegate disable, uh, but I've just left it as it is. Then you've got all your map sensors. So again, if you go and put another sensor in, you can tell it what it's got. Uh, now your exhaust flaps, you can turn them off, you can have them all the way open, you can have no OEM, I think original is the same as OEM, uh, I've always got mine open. Um, and then you can turn your factory speed limiter off, not that you'll ever go over 160 anyway, because uh, that would be illegal. But yeah, then you've got your catalytic monitors. I turn that off because it stops you from getting a code when you decat your car. Obviously, if you've got that on, you'll always get that code, and it's really annoying. Uh, if you change your fuel pump, the high fuel pump, you can tell it. Uh, and your direct injection fuel injectors. Uh, now, this is the one thing I haven't really played about with, and I don't think I need to, uh, is boost by gear percentage reduction. So you can actually turn the boost down on certain gears. Now, the only way that would be useful is if you didn't want a spinning like first and second. Um, but then again, I drive quite hard and do like a bit of um, danger. So, with it spinning in first and second, I just leave it as it is. Uh, now, you can actually delete DTCs um, when you map your car. So, like, say if you did do a decant, it wasn't getting rid of the code. You can put the code in here. And it will get rid of it, but it only works for some codes. Um, it does tell you um, they will be disabled, but it doesn't mean that the issues which trigger any given code will be resolved by turning it off. Uh, so, say if you've got like an airbag, airbag warning or something, you can't then put the code in there because it won't get rid of the code out of the SRS system. So, we go ahead and click save to them changes. You can see that it will then update your configuration on that map and then you'd go ahead, go back on the map and flash your vehicle. So I've gone ahead and turned on cold start and I've pressed flash. Uh, what it's doing now is it's downloading um, all the data from the boot mod free servers uh, in order to then flash the software straight onto your car. So we'll go ahead and flash the car. The first time you have a flashy car with any map, it will take about 20 minutes. Uh, and then after that, once the vehicle's learnt that map, or you beat most learnt that map, it can do it a lot faster. As you can see, it's going very fast. Um, it's updating the files that are already downloaded to the car. So all you have to do now is follow the on-screen instructions, it'll tell you to turn the ignition off and on, or off for 5 seconds before starting the car. And you will get codes on your dash saying driving stabilisation, uh, relating to the ABS and stuff, it'll all clear that once it's done. So if you see here, it tells you that it was a success, and it says turn the ignition off for 5 seconds and then start the car. So I'm going to turn the ignition off for 5 the ignition back on hit ok and i'm going to show you what normal cold start sounds like on my car So it's a week later since I started filming this bit of my free video. Um, I'm gonna carry it on. Uh, ran out of time last weekend, uh, but I want to get as much content in here as possible uh, for you guys. Um, so what I'll do now is you've just watched the cold start. 
uh, that come from the factory. Um, now that's with a decat, uh, res delete, um, board out, um, exhaust from the decat to the back box and then a standard back box. Uh, so it's still quite loud, um, even though it's still got the standard back box on it. Um, so what I'll do now is I'll show you what it sounds like on cold start once you turn it off on boot mod 3 as part of your map. Uh, it makes a massive difference and you're not going to piss your neighbours off, especially if you're going to make um, exhaust modifications. Uh, with the standard exhaust it's not that bad, but if you're going to buy a boot mod 3 and you're actually watching this video then uh must mean that you're going to uh, do mods to your car which will include exhaust mods as well. Uh, so I'll go ahead and show you that clip now. Uh, and then we'll wrap up the video and talk through uh, the best bits about boot mod and some things I'd like to see them add in, uh, some things that would be useful, but we'll get to that shortly. So as you can see from them two clips, there is a massive difference um, turning this off. Um, now I suppose why I did it from factory is because it will warm your car up quicker um, and all that, but to be honest, I start my car 10 minutes before I leave anyway, so it's going to warm up whether it's on cold start or not. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I like to drive my car when it's warmed up a bit, because especially with this map on, um, it drives a bit shit, uh, especially the gearbox changing gear. Um, when it's cold. Um, now, I just want to put into this video a little bit about the gearbox map you can do on Boot Mod 3 as well. Um, so, they actually do a gearbox map, um, I'll show you on the screen in a minute, and it makes a massive difference. And then, my personal opinion after owning a Golf R, it's the closest to DSG you're going to get without actually having a DSG box. Um, it actually changes gear a lot quicker and it makes a lot of difference so it is useful that boot mod have put that on their system as well so the fact that you can put say stage two map on stage two map on your car and also put the gearbox map on um, it's a very good feature to have uh, and i think that comes when you buy every map but i'm not too sure because i bought them quite a while ago but it is only 30 quid to buy the maps uh, so it's not horrendous um, so it unlocks the whole thing for uh, you to choose what map you want on boot mod. Uh, now I just want to run through, if you get boot mod on your laptop, you can actually make your own map. Um, now I've looked at this, uh, me not ever mapped a car before, don't know what I'm looking at, first time I'm looking at it, it is very complicated, I don't know if other mapping software is as complicated as this. Um, but I wouldn't know where to start, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, but it is a useful thing to have if you are a mapper or you know how to map or you've got experience in there, you can make your own map if you wanted. And I don't know uh, how far you can go as to customise the map. I, I would have thought you could make anything you want, flames, pops and bangs, uh, whatever you wanted. Uh, but it's cool to have, but it's not for me as of yet. I uh, would like to get into that in the future, but at the minute, I'm not going to blow my car up. It's not worth it. Um, now, some things I want to see them change in boot mod. I'd say the app, I've got an iPhone 11, the app's a bit finicky at sometimes getting on the menu, but other than that, it's a great software to have. Um, and I think it's really good that you can actually put the M2 stock map on um, your M55 engines. Uh, and they must be with the B58 as well for the M140i's that have, or the M240i's for the later M2 engine. Uh, but you just know that it's the map, if it's not identical, it's been based off a manufacturer BMW map. So it's not... Um, it's not dead out of the ordinary and like produced by uh, some random person. You know that it's sort of supported by 
uh, BMW in a way. Um, now I've heard a lot of great things about boot mod and never heard anyone complain about like having massive problems or blowing the car up or whatever. It is very safe. Um, so yeah, if anyone's watching this video and you've watched this video to so decide whether you want boot mod or not, uh, I'm going to say it's the best thing I've bought for the money in terms of modifications and that's just not for my BM, that's for every car I've ever owned because um, it's useful, you can turn your map off if you don't want it on you, know, you can just restore it back to factory settings or you can explore and as I say, if you're into mapping, get into making your own map and stuff so it is very useful and the fact that it's on your phone as well it's just, unless you take five minutes if you didn't want your map on anymore, turn it off or live adjust your map it's it's a very good thing to have, especially if you're into cars and you're into modifications and stuff. It's it's an absolute mint software to have. So lads, if we just talk through the final points that I want to get into this video, and um, we might as well start uh, from the top to the bottom. Um, so some of the things I love about Boot Mod is the fact that you get a dashboard. Uh, now you can add loads of stuff to this dashboard, as you can see. But one of the things I purposely use it for, I don't know why I've put ambient temperature on there, I don't know what I'm on there. Um, one of the things I use it for is for coolant and oil temp values. Uh, when I first bought this car, I was actually quite pissed off that BM didn't put um, coolant or oil temp gauge on the dashboard anywhere. And the only way you can access it is to go into like your BMW service menu on your car and to do that you have to enter your however many numbers are on your, vi your VIN and you can only do it when your car turned off it's not a constant uh, menu that you can keep up all the time uh, so if you are looking to keep your boot mod plugged in while you're driving this is a brilliant way to keep track of your coolant and oil temperature especially if you're a hard driver you want to make sure that your car's up to temp before you flooring it um so that is very useful plus you can get your boost uh dials up there and stuff um look how much boost you're actually putting for your turbo if you're going for a big map now we've already mentioned live adjust that's very good for doing your exhaust uh crackles and stuff but i say my car's not plugged in at the minute so it won't let me access it um but i did touch on that early on in the video um you can actually um custom tune your map whilst driving or park up and adjust it and drive you shouldn't mind your phone while driving but yeah it's very good to get your exhaust the way you want it um but for me i like a i like a big um exhaust noise so mine's just basically on max um now the next section diagnostics is actually very good that you can do diag from your car um, I don't know how good it works, I've actually not had issues with this car since I've owned it, I've owned it about 8 months. Um, so, yeah, I've not really touched on this side. Um, but as you can see there, learned adaptions reset, say if your gearbox is feeling a bit shit, you can reset your adaptions and relearn your adaptions. Uh, you can open or close your exhaust flap actuation, I've already always got mine open. Um, and active, active sound is the burble that comes from the exhaust. You, know, you can enable or disable that. And DME ECU functions. DME is um, the maps that you're putting on your car. So say if you were going to sell um, your boot mod, you'd have to DME reset before you then sell your boot mod. Uh, map editor, you can only open that on a laptop, so I won't show you that in this video, I might do a separate video on it just to uh, show people what it actually looks like if anyone's interested. Uh, and you've got a option for tuners, so if you're going to, um, you can actually request custom maps off, like custom tuners, and then they'll send you it in a boot mod file, and you can download it straight to your car. Now, here's the transmission map. So it's upgraded 8-speed automatic TCU flash, 
um, and it says it um, provides for higher torque limits and more precise and faster shifts. In addition to that, it maximises clamping force applied to the clutches in the gearbox, which is highly recommended on tuned vehicles. So if you're going to stage one, two, two plus your car on boot mod, it highly recommends that you also have this to go along with. Uh, and it is it is a mint map. I haven't had issues with it at all. Um, talking about issues, the only issue I've had on maps is the stage one map. Um, I've had a couple of issues where you'll get to like a rev limit and it'll hold up that rev limit. I think there is a bug, or it might just be my car, but from my experience, my car works perfectly on an M2 map. It's a bug with the map itself. Um, but yeah, that's it for looking at uh, boot mod basics. Um, as I say, if you want to see anything else from this menu, um, I will do a separate video on that for you. So I hope I've touched on the basics and um, you have a bit more of an understanding of what boot mod is and how it works and how it is a good thing to buy for your BM. Um, don't get me wrong, this is not sponsored by Boot Mod in any way, this video, but I'm just, ever since I bought it, it's the best thing I've bought for my car, it's the best thing, thing I've bought for any car that I've owned really, and I've always uh, tuned most of the cars that I've had, and to be honest, for the money, it's absolutely mint. Now, we'll be doing a separate video on um, exhaust burbles, I was going to do it in this video, but it sort of turned into a basics to introduce boot mod to the channel uh, but I will be doing uh, a separate video on um, basically what the best in my opinion is when changing your exhaust burble and I'll talk you through how to actually do that um, both on customising the map and live adjust as well but yeah, I think that wraps it up for this video. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe at the bottom and hit the like button while you're there. And drop any comments down below if you want to see any upcoming videos on either BMs in general or boot mod. I don't mind. I'm open to suggestions. But yes, lads, thanks for watching the video and I'll see you next time.